Hey everyone. So in this video, I'll share some tips with you on uh, drawing and sketching portraits in ink, particularly uh, ballpoint, because <laughs> I'm using a ballpoint pen here. Um, this is one of the subjects I get lots of questions and requests on, and I'll eventually do more of these in a kind of Q&A type of style once this third book is done, because it's been really kicking my butt. Um, and on that note, of course, big thanks to everyone who supported my books, Pending Drawing a Simple Guide, and the Pending Drawing Workbook. Thanks so much. Next year will be 10 years since I, I wrote my first book. And I'm just so thankful to all of you who have supported them. Um, so yeah, I'll just do some sketches here and uh, just talk with you guys as I go through them. Now as for references, I usually get most of my references for practice from Pinterest. Pinterest is an awesome resource for finding a wide variety of images. Um, people from different uh, ethnicities, age, gender. Like you can find so much and it's really fun to just go through and, uh, you know, explore the different images you can find. Um, uh, unless I need something more specific uh, as far as lighting um, or ethnicity or gender or age or something like that, I usually try to take images myself, especially if it's for commission or professional work. How do I normally select my uh, references? Um, I guess it, it, it depends. Um, I usually like images that are interesting. <laughs> I guess that's also vague. But in terms of, um, I love interesting facial expressions. Um, uh, I like interesting lighting. I like uh, interesting shape. Uh, and I guess it, it's kind of why I usually have a preference for drawing uh, older people, you know, the wrinkles and the small surface forms and uh, the, the, the experience, the psychology, you know, there's so much depth generally to more uh, older people. <laughs> They're just more fun for me to draw, you know, um, but generally uh, I, lighting and, and shapes and sometimes just aesthetic qualities that it has nothing to do with the subject necessarily. People are just infinitely interesting, you know. Sometimes it can be the expression of the eyes. Sometimes it can just be the shape of the eyes. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the expression necessarily, you know. Uh, a shadow formed by the nose, sometimes it's the shape of the nose. The shape of the face, sometimes it's the cheeks. You know, the chin, the beard, the hair, the shape of the head, the neck, you know. Uh, it just so many different uh, aesthetic aspects to uh, portraits that can just, you know, give you uh, a limitless array of subjects to draw from, you know? So uh, if portraits is your thing, like there's ample practice when it comes to people. It's just a matter of, you know, exploring the different ways that they can appeal to you visually. And sometimes you just have an idea for an image, you know? Uh, you may see a subject, you see a face, and uh, you have an idea of what you could do with it, you know, uh, because it's not so much that we're, uh, you know, improving on nature, but sometimes we're aestheticizing it. You know, we're adding our own element to it. You see the shape of a nose and you think to yourself like, well, I think I can make that nose appear more interesting. You know, I can make that expression. I can exaggerate it a bit. Uh, not to necessarily caricaturize it, but, you know, just to add something to it that appeals to you aesthetically. And you just explore that, you know, see where it goes. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's just a part of the creative process and it's fun anyway. And that's something you should definitely start working on as early as possible. You don't have to wait until you have all your, you know, master of all the fundamental skills before you can start uh, aestheticizing and exploring creative ways to uh, impose yourself on the subject, you know. Being able to do that with a ballpoint pen is so much fun. Um, I guess I'll just kind of segue into giving some ballpoint uh, tips and I guess just pen and ink drawing in general because it falls under the umbrella of ink drawing, uh, And but there are certain elements that are unique to ballpoint pens. So I guess we can talk about the pen first. Um, I love drawing with ballpoint pens. Um, you know, I've had tutorials on my channel going back to maybe over 10 years. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it's such a, a beautiful way to get into ink drawing if you are, because you know, we all know ink drawing can be intimidating. It's a permanent medium, uh, it's unforgiving. Uh, uh, you're drawing with line, 
and that in itself is all is also a language that we have to learn and get accustomed to using you know as opposed to tone with the graphite or charcoal and so on but a ballpoint pen is a very satisfying middle between ink drawing per se and uh, a pencil you know it you can draw really light it's very forgiving you can create loose sketches loose gesture drawings you can explore and feel things out without uh, actually committing to your lines so it's really nice for establishing proportions really quickly and very lightly without actually uh, committing to a drawing um, and although uh, this is where pencil underdrawing is a, a good recommendation, especially if you're a beginner with pen and ink drawing. Uh, establishing your proportions, establishing certain uh, underlying structure and core masses before you actually start rendering in ink is one of the main advantages or, um, or reasons for suggesting you draw with pencil before rendering with ink. But ballpoint pen enables you to, to do that to a certain extent. You can actually sketch in a drawing before you're actually finalizing it. It's really cool. But I guess that same strength is also a weakness in a sense that uh, fine liner pens, brush pens, dip pens, technical drawing pens, they, they have the advantage of being able to create very sharp and strong and bold contrast. You know, you can create deep blacks and deep dark values that makes the work uh, much more dynamic and, and visually appealing if that is the effect you want but with ballpoint pens you have to really press really hard if you want deep dark lines so it doesn't really uh, facilitate creating that type of visual effect as easily and another cool feature of drawing with a ballpoint pen that i enjoy a lot is that you can by tilting the pen you can almost simulate the similar effect you have with um, pencil where you get really light lines and then you can really take advantage of like layering which is really useful in pen and ink drawing uh, primarily because we're drawing with lines so like with the uh, left ear of this portrait um, to kind of like push the ear back and not let it uh, compete so much with the portrait next to it I just applied a light layer of lines and what that does is it's taking advantage of the like aerial perspective where you know uh, objects or things that are faint and blurred and really light tend to recede in space and things that are you know uh, sharper and uh, bolder and showing more contrast will advance so, so the left side of the portrait kind of you know is pushed back in a sense and not uh, compete too much for attention with the portrait that's to the left of it. So let's talk about lines, you know, just drawing with lines. Um, I can't emphasize enough the importance of uh, really spending time to practice uh, drawing with lines, but also study uh, how line works. Um, you will realize just how powerful and versatile it is as uh, an, one of the basic elements of drawing. To me, it is the most uh, versatile. Um, uh, with the exception of color, you can pretty much assimilate. You can pretty much simulate all the other elements of drawing using line. You can create. You can create value. You can create local value. You can create uh, uh, texture. You can create shapes. You can create volume. You can simulate mass. You can represent almost all aspects of, of the visual components of an image uh, just using line. And I feel like uh, that fact that it's also multifunctional also leads to one of the most common mistakes by a student and is to overuse line. And it, it's why you see so many pen and ink drawings generally end up becoming over-rendered or overworked, you know? Which is something I'll address in a future video I already started working on. Um, and it's it's because it can be so tempting because the line is so multifunctional it can do so many things it can be shape it can be a contour it can be a cross contour it can represent value and texture and all these things it 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 becomes tempting to use line to do everything and to represent everything right uh, which is what students generally try to do they try to draw everything they see and this may also seem a bit contrary right because 
you tell the student to draw what they see, but at the same time, you're telling them, like, don't, <laughs> you know? And uh, so what should they do? And uh, the issue uh, requires understanding a few things about drawing, and drawing with line, especially, is that understanding that one, yes, a line can function in multiple ways. You can use it to draw all these things, you know, shapes, textures, outlines, values, so on, right? Uh, you have to be aware of that, first of all, right? And now understand that a line can have multiple functions, right? So uh, while you're conveying texture, you could be conveying value at the same time, right? You can convey shape and volume and texture at the same time. You can convey value and texture, you know? So uh, it, 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 it begs the question then, okay, we have to find ways to be economical with how we use our lines, be efficient with how we use our lines. And then another thing that's very important is that a line doesn't have to be drawn to be seen or felt, right? Uh, understanding the use of uh, empty space or negative space, you know, uh, which is paradoxical in the sense because the space is really not empty so we have to also learn how to uh, let the line uh, speak and also let the space around the line speak and sometimes that's what uh, is a bit challenging for students to grasp students tend to uh, have this uh, this belief that all space needs to be filled with something <laughs> you know it's almost like uh, how in conversations pauses are important or moments of silence, you know. Uh, something doesn't have to be happening, you know. Sometimes that uh, empty space or silence is, is speaking just as loudly, in a sense, if we can learn to appreciate it. And that's something that's very important with line drawing. We have to learn how to let the empty space speak. Uh, and you can see it throughout all of these portraits um, like with the uh, the figure in the middle you know uh, with the eyes there is no need to draw the lower eyelid you know from the eyes glaring but you feel the lower eyelids there all right uh, the empty space is active it's still working you know uh, so that's something that's very important with pen and ink drawing the negative space the empty space is is active also it's actually a misnomer to refer to it as uh, empty space because it implies nothing is going on which is uh, you know couldn't be further from the truth because it's still contributing to the composition it's still contributing to the action to the the, the dynamism of the, the relationship between the features and and the, and the subject and the, the surrounding you know okay thanks so much for watching everyone it was fun hope you enjoyed it uh, if you have questions you want me to answer in uh, future videos, just drop them in the comments and I'll definitely include them uh, when I do more videos like this. So thanks so much for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you in the next video.